Got another question for the year 13 rate of reaction topic. So we're on to number 13 now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video. Okay, so part A, we've got to determine the rate constant and a possible two-step mechanism. So obviously we've got to work out the order of reaction for Fe3 plus and I minus. That's going to help us generate the rate equation, which we can rearrange and get K using one of the experiments. I'll always use row one unless told otherwise. Okay, so to get the order with respect to Fe3 plus, I'm going to use one and two because I minus concentrations kept the same. So the Fe3 plus concentrations doubled, the rates doubled, and so that must be first order. So to get the order with respect to I minus, I'm using experiments one and three, because you can see the Fe3 plus concentrations kept the same. So the I minus concentrations doubled, but the rate's actually gone up four times, so that's second order for I minus. So the rate equation looks like that. Rearrange for K becomes that. And substituting the numbers from experiment one, it doesn't matter which experiment you use, but I always use row one. You get K coming out at 22.5. Now, we mustn't forget the units. So I've just replaced the numbers with the units of these things here. And you can see that the moles per decimeter cubed on the top will cancel with one on the bottom. And we just need to simplify the denominator, take it up to the top and flip the signs. Which gives dm to the 6, mol to the minus 2, seconds to the minus 1. Okay, so moving on to the mechanism, I've just copied and pasted the overall reaction equation. Save me going back up to the top. The rate equation is telling us that in the slow step or the rate determinant step, so it's really important that you signal which steps which. So in the rate determinant step, we've got one Fe3 plus ion reacting with two, because it's second order for I minus, two I minus ions. So no matter which way you do this mechanism, there's a few ways to do it, you must have that as your reagents in uh, the rate determinant step or the slow step. Okay, so I'm going to start by making a deliberate mistake, okay, because I think it's important to make this point, because I know some students... Uh, that I've taught in the past would would make this mistake. So I'll just share sort of my experience as a teacher of that. So if you look at the overall equation, we need to make two Fe2 plus and I2. Well, if you look at the um, atoms we've got, or the species we've got in the rate determinant step, you could technically, or you might think that you could go, oh, I'll make an Fe2 plus and I2, because that actually balances for the atoms but if we look at the charge, the overall charge on the left here is 3 plus 2 minus. So it's going to be 1 plus. The overall charge here is 2 plus. So this equation is wrong. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make a bit of a weird thing to start with. I'm just going to add everything together. So I'm going to make an FeI2 species. Now the charge is going to be 1 plus because of the way these charges stack up. Now obviously that doesn't feature in the overall equation, so I need to get rid of that. So if I make that a reactant of the fast step, FeI2 plus, look at what I still need. So I've got my two I minuses, right, I need another Fe3 plus. So if I bring that in as a reactant of the fast step, Fe3 plus, and then look at my products. So I haven't got any products yet, so if I make two Fe2 plus, and an I2. Overall charge on the left, 4 plus. Overall charge on the right, 2 times 2 plus 4 plus. Right, that's fine, that works for atoms and charge. And then I'm going to cancel out that thing that I don't want, and then combine what we've got. 2 Fe3 plus plus 2I minus goes to 2 Fe2 plus an I2. So that's actually a valid mechanism. I want to show you a couple of other ways to do it, just in case other people have gone for these alternatives. So I'm going to make an Fe2+, plus, and then I'm going to make, to keep the charge right, I need to make an I2-, minus, which looks a bit very weird. Um, so I'll get rid of that with by making it a reactant of fast step. I still need another Fe3+. Plus. And then obviously that's going to make, I need to make another Fe2 plus and I need to make an I2. And then 
get rid of them. And you can see that 2Fe3 plus plus 2I minus gives 2Fe2 plus an I2. So that one works. The final one I'm going to do is I'm going to make iodine. And so therefore I'm going to need to make an Fe1 plus ion just to keep the charge right. Get rid of that Fe1 plus. Bring in the other Fe3 plus I'm going to need. And now I'm going to generate my two Fe2 plus because I've already made the I2. And then I can cancel that with that. Two Fe3 plus plus two I minus makes two Fe2 plus an I2. So there's another valid mechanism. There's probably other ways to do it as well. So if I haven't covered your method, you want me to check it, just drop me a line. Okay, so moving on to the Arrhenius graph now. So I've written up the logarithmic form of the Arrhenius equation. That's on the data sheet. You don't have to um, remember that. But I like to write it out this way because it, it's easy to see the sort of y equals mx plus c parts to it. So there's your y. So obviously link is um, on the y-axis. There's your, your m, your gradient. So you can see I've already written up there. So the gradient is minus ea over r. There's your x term, 1 over t, and there's your plus c. So there's your y-intercept, the lin of a. So what we need to do is work out the gradient once we've uh, drawn the best fit straight line. We need to calculate the gradient, and then we're going to multiply it by r, and that's going to give us a value for the activation energy. And the Arrhenius equation gives the activation energy in joules per mole, so I've highlighted the units there. They want it in joules per mole, so we don't need to um, divide by a thousand to get it in the kilojoules per mole, which they sometimes get you to do. So there's my line of best fit. I'm sure yours is there or thereabouts the same as that. There's always a range allowed by the um, exam board, so you might get a slightly different answer to me, but it would still be right. So to get my gradient, I've got this here. So that's my change in y, which I've already worked out. So 31.4 minus 28 is given a delta y of 3.4. And my change in x, so it's starting at 0 and it's going to 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3. Don't forget about that. 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3. So my change in x is that minus that minus 4.1 times 10 to the minus 3. So my gradient is coming out at minus 829. So I'm subbing my numbers into gradient equals minus a over r. So I need to multiply the gradient by the gas constant. You'll notice we've got minus signs on each side, so they're going to disappear. That's why there's a plus sign there. So I'm going to calculate the values that, and to three significant figures, it's 6890. So for the calculation of the pre-exponential factor A, I need to know what the y-intercept is. So mine is 31.4. And remember, the y-intercept is the uh, lin of A. So lin of A equals 31.4, which means that A is going to be E to 31.4. So I'm getting an A value of 4.33 times 10 to the 13.